once again with Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute. And today we wanted to talk about wisdom, conventional wisdom. What are we talking about? Well, this is this is kind of an odd topic, you know. So we're we're going to be spending a few minutes discussing why we do what we do, why and when we listen to advice, and when should we kind of let the advice go past. Okay, conventional wisdom in, in medicine is very much like conventional wisdom is uh, elsewhere. Well, everybody seems to do it, therefore it must make sense that we're going to do it. But what makes conventional wisdom so conventional? It's just simply a matter that everybody agrees. Now, if you go back historically, you know, we can have lots and lots of examples where conventional wisdom turned out to be somewhat wrong. Okay, we were taught as a culture that the world was flat, and it remained that way, okay, for thousands of years. That was the thought process for thousands of years until somebody decided to question it. Conventional wisdom being what it was, if you questioned that conventional wisdom at that time in European history, you stood a reasonable expectation of being burned at the stake because you weren't allowed to question conventional wisdom. You know, it just wasn't going to happen. You were a, her a heretic. It, you know, you did not believe the orthodoxy. You know, right now, okay, the orthodoxy in much of the media is that if you're not liberal, you're not very intelligent, okay? You are a Neanderthal. Your knuckles drag on the floor. Why would anybody believe the way that, a, a, let's say, a conservative might uh, view the world? Conventional wisdom being what it is, if, and, and I grew up in Washington, D.C. I'd never met a Republican until I was in college, okay? That's just the way that it was. It's a very, very Democratic area. You know, I you had to wonder, you know, how many eyes Republicans actually had. Do they have two eyes like the rest of us, or were they some uh, functionally different? Well, in medicine, we have equally interesting bits of orthodoxy that need to be questioned. Up until the 1860s, 1870s, they didn't really understand so much about bacterial causes of illness. So we, uh, the surgeons didn't really wash their equipment between surgeries, and one of the greatest risks to your life if you were in the Civil War and you were injured was infection. You might make it through the surgery, Okay, not a pleasant thing having a limb cut off without anesthesia. However, infection is what usually did you in. Once the conventional wisdom was thrown aside, the conventional wisdom is replaced by yet another orthodoxy, another conventional wisdom. And you have to question what you hear. So I like to, to look at things like uh, cholesterol. You know, what's a normal cholesterol? What's so abnormal about cholesterol? And for the longest time, they arbitrarily and capriciously set a value below which your cholesterol should be. And it continues to change. Sometimes it goes down and it seems to be going up once again. All right. Once they started breaking cholesterol up into component pieces, it was found that, wouldn't you know it, all cholesterol wasn't bad. In fact, a good bit of it's good for you. And the more you start looking at the conventional wisdom of cholesterol, you realize that it wasn't placed here by mistake. It wasn't placed by mistake. Well, what seems to be causing the bigger problems are your triglyceride levels. Well, most everybody knows their cholesterol level, but very few people follow their triglycerides the way they should. It's the triglycerides that put your life at risk. So conventional wisdom. Where else do we see issues with conventional wisdom? And it would be, let's say your diet. What were we taught? Okay, everything you needed to know, you, were, you, you learned when you were in high school, right? Okay, to include the food pyramid, which is absolute lunacy. There's no such thing as a food pyramid. That's a, that's a governmental issue they put together in order to simplify diet to get you to try to eat things other than meat, in particular during wartime when the meat wasn't around. You had to keep you amused doing something, so we're going to teach you. You're going to have to eat lots and lots of grain like the cattle. Well, conventional wisdom, again, may not have been quite so correct. There is no food pyramid. You don't need to separate grains from fruit, vegetables, meat, and so on and so forth, but you need to understand that once you break it into the component parts, it starts to make more sense. Essential fatty acids, amino acids, essential carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and such. Those are your basic food groups. There is no such thing as a pyramid. What about recommended daily allowance? Another interesting bit of fiction, another very, very interesting bit of conventional wisdom. Who did they ask? You might ask. To, to come up with a recommended daily allowance. And whose recommendation was it, and to whom were they recommending it? They were recommending this to 20-year-old uh, Harvard School medical students. 
all right, 20, 25 year old kids. Basically, what they did is they drew blood, they drew, you know, and they took a wild guess as to what the recommended daily allowance is. At the time these RDAs came out, they didn't even know what the vitamins did. Honest to God, they didn't even know what they did. And coincidentally, okay, what they, they, they picked numbers just out of thin air. 100 milligrams, 250, or 400. Everything was 100, 250, or 400. All 60 of the vitamin Bs, okay, it's either 100, 250, or 400. Go figure that one out. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And the same thing is true with mineral states. Well, as you get older, your needs for these things actually go up. They don't go down. So the RDA makes no sense in the absence of knowing somebody's age and disease state. So the conventional wisdom, well, I'm going to look at the bottle, and if it's within the RDA, it must be okay, is insane, okay? So these are the sorts of things we look at. The conventional wisdom isn't always very sensible. You know, why do you get blood levels on things, okay? You know, why is it necessary? What is a good blood level? The conventional wisdom is, well, if you look at the range, it should be within the range. But if you look at conventional wisdom with regards to weight, that same 95% of the population, two-thirds of them are overweight because you can see it. So the conventional wisdom starts to break down when things become visible and obvious. That's when it starts to make sense. So the message here, and what I'm trying to convey in my own uh, style, is to think less about what you're told and just do a little bit more thinking on your own. My favorite thing is cholesterol. Why do you suppose cholesterol is here? What, does, what would happen if you had no cholesterol? If, if you had no cholesterol, what is the end result? And you'll start to realize how important this stuff is. Every cell in your body uses cholesterol to make the membranes function. If you didn't have cholesterol, you would be a splot on the floor. You would be a puddle. Okay, There would be nothing recognizable about you. You would be a puree. Cholesterol itself is, is an emollient. It's a surfactant. Okay, it, the body uses it to allow lipids, oils, as it were, and water to mix. Very much the same way that you would take, oh, I don't know, a, th a salad dressing and add a little bit of egg to it. Okay, add egg to it, and wouldn't you know it, you start to end up with an emollient. You start to end up with an emollient. You start to end up with a mixture. Okay, but eggs are bad for you. Well, actually, the eggs are very, very good for you. You just have to be careful what else you eat and how you do it. So, conventional wisdom not so conventional, not so good. So cholesterol, what is a good value? Why did my cholesterol go up is a better question. And the answer is check your thyroid. When thyroid goes down, thyroid function diminishes, cholesterol goes up. Oddly enough, thyroid disease is so very, very common. It causes many of the issues that we see and we try to treat on a daily basis. All right, very good. So usually we just kind of go with the flow and we go with what we're taught in school and what our parents teach us. And we're hard to change. No kidding. And doctors are even more difficult. Why? Because they have another pressure. Not just their parents, their school teachers, the people around them, but they have other doctors looking over their shoulder. Well, what do you mean, Dr. Jones? You didn't start the patient on a statin and they had a cholesterol of 240? Okay, you get criticized. And that, that's, a, that's a fear factor. So the docs are, docs are afraid to do anything but to, uh, to march in lockstep. And it's getting worse. It's not getting better. You know, only 20% of all physicians now are in private practice, none associated with hospitals or the state. They're not allowed to think. This is a this is a very, very big problem. Here in Florida, so many of them are trained outside the country. And, you know, they may or may not have the same scientific background that Dr. Jones used to have. The guy down the street, he'd be able to explain to you, well, you know, those studies had certain problems with them. My favorite of which, conventional wisdom. Fish oil is bad for you. Okay, not, not too many years ago, they did some studies out of the VA. They took a, you know, a, a few dozen VA patients, measured these individuals with prostate cancer for who had omega-3s in their blood and who didn't. Okay, and they found that, well, those with high levels of omega-3s weren't really any different than those that didn't. Therefore, you don't need to take fish oil, which is one of the stupidest studies I have ever read in my life. How that stuff got published, I'll never figure out. Obviously, fish is bad for you, but the prescription omega-3 esterified is good for you, right? No, okay? No, 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 no. You have to look at these things with a grain of salt, and you need to talk to your doctor. You ask them the following question. Did you look at the studies to make sure that this isn't one more piece of nonsense? And, that, and as what Forrest Gump said, that's all I've got to say.
All right, doctor, thank you so much. Stagesoflife.com, uh, stagesoflifevitamins.com, that is. Stagesoflifevitamins.com will get you signed up for our regimen of nutraceuticals. And if you want to know more about the doctor and more about uh, Stages of Life, how about SuffernoMore.com, SuffernoMore.com. And we'll talk to the doctor again another day. Doctor again another day.